In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take an ugly stick big water, which is already an amazing rod, and we are going to modify it by adding a custom removable handle extension to make it even better for landing sturgeon from the bank. How often have you wished that your rod was longer? If you're looking to give yourself that unfair advantage over your buddies, then this is the modification for you. All jokes aside, before we begin, if you could please subscribe to my channel and like this video, it would go a long way helping my channel out. Enough with the bumming for subscribers, I'm just glad you all are here. With that being said, let's get right into this tutorial. What you see before you is what the extension will look like when finished. You can see with the first arrow where the ugly stick rod ends and the second arrow shows my custom build. Here is what an unmodified ugly stick looks like next to one we modified. Notice the location of the reel on the unmodified rod. The reel sits just slightly above my six foot two dad's knee. Now notice where the reel sits on the modified rod. The reel is within his power zone or by his core, which gives him the most strength and control over fighting a sturgeon. If you're taller with an unmodified rod, you will have to crouch over to fight a fish, which is miserable for any period of time. Adding a rod extension to bring the reel up into your core will put you back in control of the fish, which is necessary when you're hooked into a sturgeon over six foot. The first thing you will need to do is figure out how much of an extension you need. And that is done by lifting your rod up to a spot that is most comfortable for you. For me, an extra 14 inches was needed. Next, let's go over the parts to make this extension. All of these parts are linked in the description. First up, we have the rod cap. This simply keeps the end of the extension from getting beat up. In the link, multiple sizes are offered. We will be using a 25 millimeter. Next, we have the three quarter inch Schedule 40 aluminum pipe. I'm not going to link the pipe because I bought mine from a local pipe shop and that's what I recommend you do because you will want to make sure your parts will fit the pipe. I'd rather you be successful on your build than click my link and receive something that isn't going to work. Most pipe shops will have or will be able to order in the pipe needed. Next, we have the stainless steel pipe fittings. These are what will allow you to attach your extension to your pole. You will need both a male and a female fitting. I returned probably six different sizes of these fittings before I found this exact size. These fittings were by far the hardest part to find for this build. We have built probably six rods using these extensions and they have worked every time with this model of ugly stick big water. I recommend you get these first before you go shopping for your aluminum pipe. That way you can make sure everything fits. Next, you will need quick setting epoxy with an applicator nozzle. This can be purchased through my link or picked up at any home improvement store. Next, you will need to have foam filler rod. This foam rod will be shoved into the pipe fittings to prevent the epoxy from getting on the threads. Next, you will need some form of metal rod. We used 1 8 inch brass rod because it was what we had on hand. Aluminum would also work nicely. And lastly, you will need a 12 foot extra heavy ugly stick big water. This is the only model we have done this extension on. This is the only model I can say with assurance that the parts listed here will fit. We have tried various models and lengths from the big water lineup, but we are all in agreement that the 12 foot extra heavy is the only way to go for sturgeon. It is an absolute unit of a rod that we are about to modify. All right. Now that we have the parts down, let's go over the process step by step. Again, you're going to need to figure out just how much of an extension you need. I'm six foot two tall, 14 inches was sufficient. Next, you're going to measure and cut your pipe at the needed length to extend it. Aluminum is non-ferrous, so you can use a miter saw to cut it. However, we used a hacksaw to demonstrate that it is possible, even without fancy tools. Next, you will need to ream or file the inner and outer edge of one end of the pipe to remove any burrs. This can be done with a file, or if you don't have a file, you can use some sandpaper. Next, you will want to take a solvent to clean any of the manufacturing grease from the inside of the pipe. We ran a paper towel through the center of the pipe just to push out any metal shavings or additional grease. Next, you're going to measure and mark three quarters of an inch down from the side that you filed and mark it with a Sharpie. We then mark the measurement with a punch so the drill bit would properly engage and not wander when drilling the pipe. 
You next will measure and mark three quarters of an inch past the threads on the male pipe fitting. You will then insert the male pipe fitting into the aluminum pipe flush with your three quarter inch mark. Next, we are going to drill a hole through both the aluminum pipe and the stainless steel fitting. The drill bit you use will need to be the same size as the brass rod. It would be wise for you to have a new sharp drill bit when drilling the hole through the pipe and the pipe fitting. Stainless steel is extremely hard, so a new sharp drill bit is necessary. When you drill, make sure your drill or drill press is on a low speed setting. High speed will just burn up your bit. Next, we are going to make marks on both the stainless steel pipe fitting as well as the aluminum pipe to make sure that when we reinsert the pipe fitting with epoxy, that we will have the fitting going the correct direction so the holes line up again. As you can see here, the brass rod will not go through the hole we drilled, so what we will need to do is take a file or a sander to the brass rod to give it a point. That way we can later tap the brass rod through the pipe fitting and the aluminum pipe. The pipe is roughly one inch in diameter, so we are going to cut the brass rod approximately one eighth inch bigger than the pipe. We are about to assemble the rod extension, but before we do that, we need to sand or buff up the stainless steel pipe extensions, careful not to remove your markings. The next step is probably the most nerve wracking part of this build. We need to cut into the bottom of the ugly stick. This next part can be achieved with a hacksaw or a sander or even a miter saw. We have access to a wide belt sander, so that is what we are going to use. We are going to sand off no more than one quarter of an inch off the bottom of the rod cap to expose the hollow interior. As seen here, you can see how we are slowly exposing the hollow interior. But again, if you don't have access to a sander, a hacksaw with a steady hand would work just fine. Once the end cap is off and the hollow center is exposed, you will need to clean out any of the dust. This can be done with a rag or with an air nozzle. Next, you are going to screw both the male and female pipe fittings together. Once together, you will then measure the distance from the edge of the female fitting to the three quarter inch mark on the male fitting. If you are like me and have OCD, this next step is extremely crucial. In order to make sure that your rod extension butts tightly up against the bottom of the ugly stick, you are going to want to increase the measurement on the caliper by 1 16th of an inch. It is pertinent that your initial measurement is exact and then by adding the extra 1 16th of an inch in measurement, you will ensure that your rod extension sits tightly and not loosely against the rod. Most modern calipers have a depth measuring stem. We will use the depth measuring stem to ensure that when we epoxy the female fitting into the bottom of the rod, that the female pipe fitting is at the proper depth inside the rod. Next, it's time to break out the quick setting epoxy. Also, you're going to want to rip off some small pieces of the foam filler rod or whatever material you plan on shoving inside the pipe fittings to stop the epoxy from fouling up the threads. Next, push the foam rod or whatever material you are using into the end of the pipe fittings. You will then take the pipe fittings apart. First, we are going to epoxy the female fitting up inside the end of the ugly stick. Apply the epoxy roughly 3 quarters of an inch inside the rod where the pipe fitting will be sitting at. There is no reason to add extra epoxy at the entrance of the rod end because that epoxy will just get in the way of the male extension when you go to screw the two pieces together. It is important that you keep the 3 quarter inch gap at the bottom of the rod epoxy free. It is best to have a second set of hands to help you do this. We previously measured the distance between the male and the female fitting with calipers. Now we are going to use the depth stem on the end of the caliper with the added 1 16th of an inch in length to push the female fitting up inside the rod end. Once the female pipe fitting has been epoxied and inserted, lay the rod flat and re-measure to ensure that the fitting hasn't moved. Immediately after epoxying the female fitting inside the ugly stick, we need to go and epoxy the male fitting inside the aluminum extension. This needs to be done within minutes after gluing the female end because the epoxy applicator tip has mixed epoxy in it, which is beginning to set up, so don't waste time and get right onto gluing the male side or you will be buying a second tube of epoxy. We previously put markings on the aluminum pipe and the pipe fitting. Ensure that the markings now line up so that the drill holes also line up. Before the epoxy has time to set, we are going to take the brass rod that we have previously prepped and we are going to tap it with a hammer 
completely through the aluminum pipe and stainless steel fitting in one side and out the other. And what I mean by that is you're going to want to have about 1 16th of an inch protruding on either side. Next, because brass is malleable, we are going to place the extension on an anvil or hardened steel surface and we are going to hammer the brass pin so it expands inside both the aluminum pipe and the stainless steel fitting. Adding a brass pin is not necessary. The epoxy will more than likely outlive you or me. However, it gives me comfort to know that by pinning the male fitting inside the extension, that the male fitting now has zero chance of ever twisting or coming loose. With that being said, if you are looking to save some time and cut steps, you are more than welcome to not drill the pipe and the fitting to add the brass pin. However, I do recommend it. This next step is not necessary. However, I have OCD, so we chucked up the extension on a lathe. With the lathe turned off, we can take a file and file down the brass pin ends that might be sticking out. We then filed, sanded, and took steel wool to the aluminum extension to clean it up and polish it. And lastly, we put the cap on the aluminum extension. And what you're left with is a tool that will allow you to comfortably and confidently do battle with a sturgeon. We added a little bit of wax to the threads just to make the process of threading on or off the extension that much smoother. WD-40 or any other lubricant would work just fine. We have done battle with countless sturgeon with this exact setup. Both the rod and the extension have performed wonderfully. The purpose of my YouTube channel, Fish Quest, is to target different species. Every episode is a new species of fish. However, this year, 2024, we are exclusively going to be targeting sturgeon. So if you haven't already done so and you want to see this rod setup in action, subscribe to my channel, sit back, and enjoy the ride.